everyone, this is Emma Schwachner and you're watching Schizophonic. I'm sitting down today with Dee Dee and Blitz from Legendary Overkill. How are you guys going? Pretty good. Things are going well. Doing well. How are you, Emma? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Can't complain. So, this is your first tour to Australia. You know, how are you finding it so far? Having fun so far. Yeah. Uh, we've been here about five days. We flew into Brisbane, had a day off there and a great show and then Melbourne yesterday. And then yeah. Sydney today, so. Changing the name of the country to no smoking. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly, right? It's, really it's okay with me. Well, I'm having a good time. I mean, it's really kind of cool for us to think that after 25 years, there's still new territories out there for us. So Definitely. to actually have the opportunity after the band had started back in the 80s to say, hey, this is our first Australian tour, and knowing that new territories are opening, that's always, uh, I don't know, the feather in the cap for the year of touring, the new Definitely. place. So yeah, this has been the most exciting for me so far. Yeah, it's great. You guys got to meet any koalas or kangaroos yet? Yeah, we did. Yeah. In Brisbane, we went to the koala park, we held koalas, we fed the kangaroos, we did all the touristy shit. I got I got shit right in the shirt from... <laughs> what? Yeah, from what? <laughs> I was holding. I was holding a little one like this, a shit in a shirt, and and the woman who was helping me said, "Sorry." I said, "It's okay. We're all fathers, so we've experienced this once before in our lives." Maybe it's good luck or something, you know. <laughs> so you guys have got the new album out, Ironbound. So it's getting really awesome reviews from both the critics and the fans. So can you tell us a bit about the record, what it was, songwriting, reporting, all of it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know that we had. We approached the uh, records kind of the same. Um, I don't know that we did anything particularly different on this one. I'm glad people are digging it, and it's nice to see. Um, you know, the reviews have all been good. The kids are all loving the stuff. We love playing it. Uh, but every record we do is, we love, you know. So uh, I don't know there was anything particular that we did different on this one. We wanted it, you know, we knew we had something cool when we were doing it, because it had a lot of energy, had a lot of vibe to it. But there's a, there's a huge X factor and it wasn't planned and, and, and this is in my opinion and that X factor is that uh, we've done a lot of touring for the record prior and that was the record court Immort Immortalis. Uh, when we had come off this Immortalis tour, Didi, we recorded Didi's studio and as, I think within 30 days of Overkill Exodus for Europe, uh, we were recording drum tracks. So I really think that if you can have the road bleed into the recording, you get this kind of X factor of energy that you can't fake, you can't fake, uh, it has to be natural. I think the record's cohesive, which is really kind of cool about it, so my favorite track kind of keeps changing. Yeah. And that, which is kind of cool, I mean, I remember being a kid and listening to, uh, you know, my favorite kid records, uh, Black Sabbath Volume 4, that to me was a cohesive record because you didn't just put on Snowblind, you listened to the whole record start to finish. And I think Ironbound uh, has that quality, and that's why I can't really choose a favorite track. Yeah, definitely. So, you guys are now on Nuclear Blast. So, um, how is it being on Nuclear Blast now? Is it a big change? How's it going so far? Huge, huge promotion machine, which really, uh, I, I think that, you know, you know, obviously the product has been accepted at a high level, um, but it has to be gotten to the right people, promoted correctly, to even know it's out there. And Nuclear Blast is that... Uh, uh, entity to get us to those people so they can see, hey, it was a real quality product. So, I, I mean, I love it. I love it. This is my favorite label in, of all yeah. the 600 that we've been on. Yeah. <laughs> By far. You know what it is, Nuclear Blast? A lot of people that work there are fans. You know, they love this kind of music. And they say, uh, you know, remember the Witchfinder General record from 1981? And, I mean, they know all that shit. They grew up on all the same stuff, so... Uh, it's definitely helpful when you're explaining to him about this and that. You don't really have to explain it like some just label geek. You know, it's a it's a guy who understands. So yeah, it'd be I, great. I got this great story from the '90s. He and I were sitting in Atlantic in the mid '90s, and uh, uh, somebody was going over a, a promotion campaign for us, and he had a really expensive suit and a tie on, and he was, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and we're going to do this. And he said, "Excuse me, boys." He had to go out and take the call, and I looked at him and I said, "We're fucked." <laughs> But when you go into Nuclear Blast, the absolute opposite happens. You know, I walked in there to do uh, a listening party uh, in Dunsdorf, Germany, and everybody's got on a black T-shirt with, you know, you know, a logo on it. So you know that all 60 people that work there are into this. And I, th I think that that's the difference. Definitely. Um, so you guys have been one of the most prolific metal bands over the past few decades. Um, so how do you guys stay so inspired? Because you guys are a constant band. You keep releasing new albums. Unlike some bands where they make a comeback later on, how do you guys keep so inspired to keep going? Why? Yeah, okay. I said we're, we're fans too. Yeah. I think it's, it's part of it, like Nuclear Blast. I mean, uh, 
it's not, I, I can't even imagine somebody who is, uh, you know, uh, blocked in their head saying, I don't know if we're gonna, I, I don't, I'm not inspired to write this, I'm not inspired to write that. I mean, I'm always, you know, chomping at the bit to make another record, get back out there again, even after all these years. So it's not uh, hard at all. Plus, as you can see on this poster right here, we are legends. Exactly. <laughs> so, it can't be that hard. Yeah, legend. right? It's my favorite quote. How you doing today, Blitz? Not bad for a living legend. <laughs> <laughs> Says it right there. It's your Blitz. Exactly. So, um, so you guys have been through quite a few lineup changes. So, how do you think that these have affected your sound as a whole? Well, you know, I have a, you know, I have a take on that. And when you add a new guy to the mix, um, you have to almost raise yourself up to his energy level. Let's say Ron being the last one lineup change, and that was 2005, so it's not even that current. Um, so when Ron came into the van, the rest of us saw this energy level and just kind of, you know, you kind of match it. It, it, it reminds you that there's uh, uh, there's more to be done. And, and I, I really think that one of the things that we've done over the years is to look at lineup changes as being positive. And I also think that, you know, a great misconception about this band is there's only been one person who's ever been asked to leave this band. Everyone else has done it with their own accord. And to stay together and touring for a 25 year period is hard enough on its own, I mean, let alone 10 years. I mean, that's, that's a long part of your life. And Dee Dee and I are obviously running from the law and have felonies since so, <laughs> so we keep moving. But, the, uh, but I think that the new guy always brings the new energy. And, and I can see that excitement, for instance, in Ron's eyes. Or when Dave joined the band 13 years ago, there was, there was a, there's a fire that, you, you know, that in my opinion, I, I match. And, and that really becomes inspiring. So, have you seen the Rat Skates documentary? Um, it was called Born in the Basement. And well, basically, it's on. I was going to ask, um, you know, do you think it accurately portrays Overkill in the early years? Have you, have you seen it? I have not. Oh, okay. Who? Cool. Um, Rat Skates. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys should check it out and get back to me on that one. Okay, we will. We will. <laughs> exactly. Oi! So. What I'm sure a lot of fans want to know, and as, as to why, how did you guys come up with the mascot challenge? 